Okay, so in this video we're going to be looking at how you do that. It's a cinch pouch, it's a boxed pouch, so it stands up nice and well. It's got zipper tabs and it's fully lined. So in the um, information about the video it tells you how to piece this bit together and in the video I'm going to look specifically at how you do the zipper tabs and then sewing it all together and boxing the corners before finishing it off by joining your seams. So let's get going. Okay, so you've got the two panels that are going to be your pouch and these are done. So there's three strips in each panel, you're going to make two panels. So this top strip measures five inches, this middle strip is 1.5 and this bottom strip is 3.5. And then I stitch them together using a 3 8 for seam allowance, so about one centimetre, 3 8 of an inch. Um, and then you repeat it, so you've got... The second one, so that's 5, 1.5, 3.5, stitched together with a 3.8 seam allowance. And I tend to do it with that bigger seam allowance because um, I want it just to be more, more robust for the pouch. And then the other tip I would say, let me check I've got these the right way up now. So you probably can't see it too well because it's got the interfacing on the back, but you're going to press these seams in opposite directions. So this is the top panel of the pouch. These seams I pressed down and these seams I pressed up and then when it comes to sewing it together that will really help you for nesting them together. So it's the other tip I would say. Um, yeah and the interfacing always do it with a damp towel I've used Vylene F220 and that's a really really nice interfacing because it just gives it a little bit of structure while still allowing it to stay soft for your fabric so that's good. So now we're going to come on to the zipper tabs. So I'm going to keep this here and I tend to try and use matching fabric for the zipper tabs and then this means it will kind of just blend in or if you can't pull the corners out too great then it's going to work fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is check the width of your zip. So I'm going to get my ruler, it's quite a big one actually, I didn't think this one through very well. So if I lay it on here and I can see it's just about an inch but I want the tab to be ever so slightly wider, so I'm going to cut it to an inch and an eighth, just so then it kind of fits a bit more snugly. So I'm going to cut this into strips. I'm going to neaten off. Yeah, right, I'll neaten off this. And always use a rotary cutter away from you. And again, if this is um, a directional print, then you obviously want to make sure you've lined it all up correctly right so that's now my flat side I'm now just going to measure one inch and an eighth and this is going to be my zipper tab and you want to make two of these because obviously you're going to have a zipper tab at either end of your pouch so if your zip's slightly wider then I would say do you cut the width of your zipper tab to the width of your zip and then add an eighth on just kind of just to give it a bit of room because when it's stitched it'll kind of pull it in a bit and then once you've cut your strips into one inch and an eighth you then want to cut them down to five and three quarters of an inch so i'm just going to get rid of that bit of selvage and now i'm going to cut it so it's five and three quarters and just line up all your measurements so you make sure so I've got one, two, three, four, five and three quarters and I'm just going to chop that bit off and I think that bit will be, yeah, too short. So that's why I've got two strips and it might be, sorry, I've just completely knocked the thing then. So it might be that your strip is long enough that you don't have to cut two strips. You basically want to cut two rectangles measuring five and three quarters of an inch and the width, whatever your zip width is plus an eighth. Just check that's all lined up, which it wasn't. There. Right, so I'll get rid of those two bits so I don't end up doing the wrong zipper tabs. I'll get rid of the ruler. Now I can stop banging around hopefully. Right, so these are going to be your two zipper tabs. Okay, so it's not very glamorous here for the video, sorry. So get your ironing board, get your iron, and then um, I'm using this clover because it's um, like an iron ruler, which is really, really genius, fantastic idea. 
And what you want to do is flip your tab over to the wrong side and you're going to press one end of the tab in by either um, three quarters of an inch or two centimetres. And that's why I really like this because you can line this up and I'm lining this flat edge with the reader up against the flat edge here. And you can see here that's not quite big enough so I'm just going to move it up a little bit more. And it's really good because it doesn't slide, it kind of picks up the resist. So there, so that's now going to be my two centimetre fold over, three quarters of an inch fold over. And then you can just press straight on. That's what's really fantastic about this stitch guide. So then do it. And then I would actually recommend just giving it a second press as well, just once it's off there. And then you're going to do the same on the other side. And you'll repeat this as well on your other zipper tab. So, slightly off camera there, wasn't I? So, two centimetres, and I'm just doing this roughly two centimetres, I'm not being too precise. So, two centimetres or three quarters of an inch. If you're one of those fantastic people who can do it by sight, then I'm in awe. I think I might just move that side. No, that's good. But again, you just want it to be roughly. And then once these two ends are folded in, you fold it in half, so you're matching up these two folded bits here, and then you just want to press it again. And this is just to keep it all nice and flat. And then once you've done it on your other zip tab, then you are going to have two finished zip tabs which are made to the width of your zip. So when it comes to measuring the zip, let me move the ironing board out of the way. Okay, so now you wanna make your zip fit your pouch. So we've got the pouch, which is sewn together, impressed with your seams and with the interfacing on the back. We've got our two zipper tabs, which are ready to go. And they're gonna go either end here. So what I start off by doing is I have an old pair of fabric scissors. So these have kind of got too blunt for cutting fabric, but they'll do for cutting the zip. And I also, because I use a lot of different size zips depending on what the project is, so I tend to buy them slightly bigger than I need and then I cut it down afterwards, which is why I use these old fabric scissors. So I'm going to cut this end off first. This metal bit is no longer in here. And it's just a little bit of pressure, but that's absolutely fine. And then what you're going to do is open up this zipper tab and place this end of your zip so it matches up with the end of the zipper tab. And then you're going to fold it back, make sure these two sides are kind of roughly in line with each other. And then I like to use pins to hold it in place. And I'm just going to put one in that side. You want to make sure it's not got bunched up or anything. And one in that side. So that's now holding that nice and securely there. Actually, I might just redo that because it's pulled out of place a little bit. And I think that's the thing about using pins is you can kind of re reposition it as and when you need to until it's sewn. So let's try repinning that now. Just make sure it's all lined up and pin. Right, so that's one end of your zip tab done. So the wider panel is going to be the top, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to place one end here. And actually, I'm just going to hang it off ever, like, I'd say less than an eighth of an inch there, hanging off. And what I want to do here is I'm opening up this tab, and this fold at the halfway point, again, I'm just going to ever so slightly hang it off this edge here. And this is where you're going to cut it, so it's the right size. And the first thing you want to do is don't cut it until you've got the zipper pull onto the bulk of your fabric because otherwise you're going to cut your zip and the zipper pull won't be on it. So I'm going to line it up here and just going to roughly check where it goes. And I can see here this is where I'm going to need to cut it. So I'm going to side my scissors underneath the zip but on top of the fabric so I'm not cutting the fabric. And I'm just going to cut through those two there move those two zip bits out of the way and then I'm just ever so slightly lifting it up and I'm going to slide that zipper tab underneath until I can hold it in place with my thumb and again I'm lining up 
this edge of the zip with the edge of the zipper tab. You fold it over, hold it in place, make sure it's all lined up, hasn't got moved, and then that's when you add your pins. So add a pin that side and add a pin that side. And again, this is a really good chance just to um yeah make sure that's lying flat and then at this point you can kind of lay it on top of your pouch and you're gonna see yep you've cut it down to the right size and again you can have just make sure the zip still works if it's not you haven't kind of moved it around ever so slightly so i'm going to move that bit back down so your zip tabs are now pinned into place you've cut your zip now you need to stitch these so it's all pinned and now that means it's ready to sew so i'm just going to move this here slightly um, so the first thing I'd say is you want to make sure you do it in a matching thread because this stitch is going to show and we're going to do three rows of stitching to hold this into place. So the first one is going to be right on the edge. You don't want it to go off the edge but it's just going to hold that fold into place. So I'm starting and I'm just going to go ever so slowly. And then make sure you get to the edge and then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to go back a stitch because I've gone off, is I'm now going to turn it round and reverse back over, well no I'm not reversing, so rather than reversing back I've turned it round and I'm going to go back over that line of stitching again and that's just going to strengthen that particular line. And I'm going really really slow so that my needle's not going to catch on the zip or break on the zip. So now to do the second line, I'm not going to stop this thread, I'm going to turn it and I'm just going to take two stitches. Now my stitch length is 2.4, I'm just going to do a second one. So that's given me two stitches across and now I'm going to make my second line of stitching. And if it's, at this point you could probably take your needles out actually. And you're just going to go slowly again and then once you get to the end and I went too far again you're going to turn it round keeping your needle in the tab and don't worry about this that was my start thread I'll cut that all off I'll cut that off afterwards so now I'm going to go back over that second line of stitching And then you're going to do that once more, so turn it, take two stitches towards you and then do your third line of stitching. And this is why I like to do it in a matching colour because then if my lines aren't perfectly straight it won't matter. And then once you've done, take your needle up took out and then if you've got a thread cut on the machine use that or a pair of scissors okay and then once you've done your zip tabs you just want to repeat it on the other side so that they're both sewn into place and then cut off any loose threads because obviously the loose threads will make it difficult for the zipper to open and you see here this is why you want it you can see here this is why you want it to be in a matching thread so that these three lines of stitches are really secure but also, once they're in a pouch, they're not going to stand out. And then, you'll be able to see that it's nice and secure. There's three lines holding it, so it does it really well. So, your zipper is done, the zipper tabs are done. And now you need to attach the zipper to your pouch. So I'm going to move these pins out of the way. And you're going to have two bits of lining cut out to the same size as your pouch. So, I've cut these out to... Um, I think it's eight and a quarter in height, um, eight and a quarter inches in height, sorry, and ten and a half inches across. And what you're going to do is take one of your outside pouch pieces and lay it um, right side up facing you. And this is going to be the top because that's the bigger panel. Get your zip and I'm going to place it face down. So this zipper pull is going straight down onto this pouch. I'll move it down. And it may be that, yeah, 
you remember we had it overhanging ever so, like by less than an eighth of an inch and that's absolutely fine so I'm going to do this so I've now put the pouch right side facing up you can see that went uh, got loose threads there that I didn't cut off that's what happens when you turn it over that's fine it'll all be caught in the seam allowance anyway there we go right so pouch facing right side up zipper is going down right side facing down and then your pouch lining you're going to put that right side facing down so you're kind of creating a sandwich with the right sides facing together so you're just going to line this up and you can see here that these edges all line up and then I like to use pins to hold it in place but you could use um you can get tape or you can use um clover do wonder clips which can hold it into place as well and then just going to make sure that all three edges are lining up nice and neatly here and I'm going to pop my pin through and that's really going to help when you're stitching together and don't worry about what happens when we get to the zipper pull because I'll do that when we get to it so I think the key bit here is just to make sure that the right side of the zip is facing the right side of the outer pouch and then the right side of the lining is facing down onto the right side of the outer pouch too. So once you've got your pins you're then ready to sew. Okay so once your zipper fits on we're now going to sew it and I tend to sew I use the width of the zipper of it with it attached here on the left I use this width to kind of mark out where I'm going to sew. So I'm going to start down here I'm going to make sure my thread's straight I'm going to put the needle down into the fabric and I'm going to hold this thread tight so that it doesn't pull it in or get knotted up and I'm just going to take a couple of stitches forwards and then I'm going to go back a couple of stitches and that's just to secure it into place and I'll go back forwards again and you're now going to sew the um, the width of the pouch so go nice and slowly Kind of when you get close to a pin you'll kind of feel when it's the right time to take it out and you should be able to just see as you're sewing to make sure that the three edges are all lined up and you could use zipper tape to hold this in place if you'd rather you can see here it's starting to get a bit too bulky but that's fine because we can recut it when it gets slightly further down you see also that I'm not too precise right so once it's got to a certain point and I know the zipper pull is coming up what I do is I secure my stitches so as we did at the start I'm going to go back and then forwards again that's now secured I lift my needle up and I'm just going to cut the thread just if I can do it sideways there we go just picked up a whole load of pins then and then you want to open it up and you just want to move the zipper pull down to the side where you've just sewn it so now when you finish stitching it together try and get it back in there so the zipper pull was here and we were just stitching up towards it we've now slid it all the way back down here so now the zipper pull is here where we've already stitched and it means you can now finish stitching this without the bulk of the zipper pull getting into place so you want to start about half an inch back from where we were and again lower your needle down start the needle in the fabric and do the same thing of securing your thread you're going to go forwards a little bit backwards a little bit and now you're going to finish closing up and join in these fabrics. And see here where I've got a bulk of fabric. So I'm just going to take this final pin out and it's actually moved it along and that's fine. You'll see I'm not too precise. And secure your thread again. Take the needle out. Cut it. And then And then once you've sewn it all the way, you'll be able to see this is where we started and stopped so that we can move the zipper pull. This is where my fabric's overshot and you can tell, and I'm showing this to show you that I'm not too precise and how you can also make it work for you. And then when you open it up, 
you'll be able to see that you have got let me get that back in focus you'll be able to see that you've got your zipper pull your fabric the outer side of the fabric and the lining on that side so and that's fine this side's going to measure up you can see there it's matching up that's perfect so once we press it and then this bit which i like to call my dodgy edge bit which is fine it's catchy isn't it and we'll trim that off afterwards and make it work so again really don't worry about making it precise you make it your own and you make it your style so now we need to attach it to the other side of the pouch so take your fresh but unsewn outside zipper pouch and i'm just going to open that up ever so slightly a little bit actually there and then actually what i might do is just trim that bit off now so it'll line up better so and that's fine if that's what if you end up overshooting like mine did then that's absolutely okay so just trim that off so it'll line up nice and easy with the other side of the pouch okay so take your unsewn outer zipper pouch you're now going to put this remember this is the right side of the zip we're going to put it face down in the same way we did before put it face down here and lining up the top edge of the zip with the top edge of the pouch and kind of just i just finger press this down and out of the way and then your second bit of lining you're now just going to place this over the top too and again you just want to line in the same way we did at the start you're just going to line these edges up and then pin it or if you're using clips you can use your wonder clips or um tape or however you prefer to do it it's absolutely fine it might be that if i use tape it might not overshoot but i also know that i'm a bit bit too impatient to use tape i quite quite often i just want to get sewing so it's fine just find the way that works for you just going to go all the way along match them all up and then you're going to sew it again in exactly the same way that we did before okay so same way as we did before you're going to start drop the foot i haven't changed the foot around at all i'm keeping the bulk of the pouch on the left and the zipper's still here so i'm going to put the needle down into the fabric hold the thread tight and go forward a few stitches and then back a few stitches just to secure it and now i'm going to keep going and take the needles out as you go and then i went too far there and then when you feel you're close to the zipper pull, secure your thread by going back and then forwards. Take the needle out. Let's when it linked up properly. And then the same way we did earlier, remember you've got twice as much here. You're just going to lift up to find, there, to find the zipper pull, which is here and just move it back down. Some people do it by keeping the needle in the fabric and sliding it down. I find it fiddly, so I prefer just to take it out and then restart again. So I'm gonna go back about half an inch and drop the needle into the exact line of stitching that I was doing before and then secure your thread by going forward and back again. And then you're just gonna stitch all the way to the end. See here how it's overshot again again don't worry i trim it down and then when you get to the end secure it take your needle out and cut your thread okay and then once you've sewn the zip in on both sides and open it back out you are going to have this beautiful zipper and you can see here how those three stitches that we did hold the zipper in place and also how mine was a bit messy on the other side it really won't show once it's like this but what you finally need to do with this zipper is you need to top stitch just to make sure that none of this fabric will get caught and so that it can open nice and smoothly. I always get excited doing this bit because it 
you see the puff colour inside so that's it's really great so go and keep the zipper foot on your machine okay so we need to top stitch it into place so make sure you iron it before you do your top stitching and you want to make sure that the lining and the outer fabric are both pulled away from the zip as much as they possibly can be obviously without making a hole in the fabric so i'm using the zipper foot and again i'm using the width of the zipper foot as a guide um so whereas before we matched it along this edge i'm going to use this edge now this narrow edge of the zipper foot and i'm going to match it all the way along the edge of the zip so start with your needle in and secure your thread by going forwards and back again and then go back and then forwards again and as you go you'll probably find it helpful if i just gradually pull it away as i'm sewing and this is just so the top stitch holds it nice and away from the zip so it won't get caught as you use it and again you can do it in a matching colour if you want to make sure your stitches don't stand out if you want them to stand out you can go for a contrast so i'm coming up to the zipper pull this time i am leaving the needle in i'm going to lift the foot up with the needle still in turn it slightly and i'm just going to wiggle it lift the foot up a little bit more of it can do wiggle it so the zipper is now out of the way and then turn it back so you're still stitching in the same direction Pull it out nice and flat, lower the foot and just continue sewing until you get to the end. And you can see I'm just matching this edge up all the way along. And make sure you keep pulling it so it's nice and taut. And then once you get to the end, you're going to secure your thread again. So backwards and forwards again. And remember your bobbin thread is going to show on the inside of the pouch so you want to make sure your bobbin thread if i can get that in focus your bobbin thread blends in and i tend to choose the top thread to blend into because my stitches aren't always that straight and now you're just going to do the same on the other side so drop your foot put a needle in i haven't changed the footer over the footer is that a word we'll do it now and you go secure your thread by going forwards and back and then I'm going to go all the way and make sure you're holding it nice and tall. And I'm still using the edge of this foot as the guide for my stitching to hold it nice and away from the zip. And I'm going to stop here, leave the needle in, lift the foot and slide turn it and slide the zip down and again it tends to be a little bit of a wiggle but that's fine and then turn it back drop your foot make sure the fabric's pulled away from the zip just move the lining out as well and then you're ready to sew to the end And then once you're done, lift it up, secure your thread, sorry, lift it up and then cut your thread. And once you've done that, you can give yourself a massive round of applause, pat on the back, anything you want to do to celebrate, a little happy dance, because you have done your zipper. And it is beautifully top stitched and it's all held in place, nothing's caught up. Those stitches are all blending in, so it all works beautifully. Front and back. And it works which is always a plus from my side so now you need to join these together to make your pouch so open the zip up so it's nearly all the way open i tend to leave you know like i don't know half an inch that probably is so it is mostly open and now you're going to match these sides together so pull the two outer sides so that they're right sides together and then you're going to open it out so you've got the two linings right sides together and the two outers right side together now because you've got this cinch waist belt on your pouch you need to make sure they match up and this is where it helps that we ironed the seams in different directions so make sure these edges are lined up and then I would use a pin to hold each of these into place so 
that's one of those and one of those and then line up the other corners so I'm going to line pin that one in place and then do the same on the other side to make sure the waist belt strips on your pouch are matched up and put a pin to hold it in place so first bit second bit and then I'm going to pin that one into place and turn to add make sure it's sitting as nice and flat as it can be and I'm not worrying too much about the fact that's sticking out because I was going to say I'm not a perfectionist but I am but I know it'll be all right once you start stitching it together so it's fine right when it comes to these bits here so you've got this little bit of the zipper tab here so what you want to do is fold it so can you see there so the let's see if I can get it in focus there so the fold of the zipper tab is facing towards the lining so you're kind of matching that together and then you're going to put a pin to hold that into place so you really want to make sure that this fold is towards the lining and not towards the outer bag because otherwise it's going to show and then stick a pin through and there are multiple layers of fabric here so just just be aware that it is going to be bulky and then you're going to repeat it on this side so this is the outer bag this is the bag lining we're going to fold it so that the zipper tabs are facing towards the bag lining and then I'm just going to pin it into place and in the same way that we pinned the outer bag you're just going to pin the lining together I know I'm doing it up in the air so it probably isn't going to get it to lie flat it's quite a forgiving pattern so I wouldn't worry too much about that so just make sure nothing's sticking out too precariously and then match these corners up and then once you've matched this you we're going to sew all the way around the pouch there we go right so this is all pinned into place now this is holding those folds of the zipper tab towards the lining we've matched up our cinch stripes down here cinch belt waistbands and what you want to do is you want to leave a two inch gap here so you're going to sew from here all the way around until you get to here and then stop and leave a two inch gap here and the fact you've left the zip a majority of the way open that's really gonna help so sew all of that and then when you do it'll look something like this okay so once you've sewn all the way around and kind of you'll see it's not overly neat on here but you kind of want to go slow here and it's the reason why I make the zipper tabs longer in it so that your machine can kind of cope going over here um, so you can use a walking foot if you'd rather kind of it slide all those multiple layers through together I just use a normal machine foot for sewing that around so I switch back from the zipper foot so you've now got them all sewn together you've got your two inch gap here the last thing we need to do is we're on the home stretch so bear with me we're going to box the corners so what we're going to do you've got two sides here you're going to open it as if you're opening a bag of crisps so you pull in both sides out like that like you open in your crisps and what you should be able to feel is you should be able to match this bottom seam with this side seam because you're kind of pulling them together so i would I'm try and do it again so open up your crisp pouch for your bag and try and match these two seams up by feel and again it doesn't have to be too precise and then what you want to do is you want to lay it nice and flat here so you can see it's made a sort of triangle shape I've got the bulk of the bag over here at this point I'm going to use the ruler and I'm gonna see if I can do this so I'm gonna line the ruler line up here along my stitch line that's just to make sure I'm cutting straight and what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure an inch and a quarter and then I'm just going to cut it and you'll see that you've now just this is going to be your boxed corner so when you open it up you'll be able to see your two seams here 
So what you want to do is then make sure that you're kind of feeling these two seams that they nest with one another. And then you're just going to stick a pin in it. And we're going to say this in a minute, but you want to do this on all four corners. So I'm going to show it again because it can be a little bit tricky. So you've got the pouch here, you're holding it flat, lift the corner up. And you're going to pull the two bits of fabric away from each other as if you're opening a bag of crisps and you want to pull it out enough so that the bottom seam and the side seam can then meet each other meet in the middle then you're going to lay it flat put the bulk of the pouch over there move your flag from earlier and again you're just going to cut an inch and a quarter so i'm lining up this stitch line along the line of my ruler to make sure I'm cutting it straight and I'm measuring an inch and a quarter from the very tip of this corner like the flag corner I'm doing a quarter and then an inch and then you're just going to cut it and always cut away from you don't have fingers too close to it and again you're going to match this seam up so that one to that one and I've made the seam allowances go in different directions and that just helps you to nest it and then you're going to repeat the same on both of these two corners. Then you need to sew these kind of open corners that you've just cut. So they're pinned into place, all four corners, and I'm just using a normal machine foot. And again, I'm going to, all the seam allowances throughout this, so three eighths of an inch, one, yeah, three eighths of an inch or one centimetre. So let me just make sure, you want to make sure it's lying nice and flat. And we're going to do as we did before so start with your needle in and just going to secure the thread at the start and at the end and just make sure it's lying nice and flat so you're not going to get any kind of puckers in the fabric And then lift it up and cut your thread and you want to do that on all four corners okay so you have sewn all four corners you've boxed you've cut them you've boxed them you stitched them on all four so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it the right way you are really really close to finish now so this is where it helps that we left this open gap because otherwise you wouldn't be able to turn it through and also it helps that the zip is kind of nearly open and you're just going to pull it through and do it nice and, I was going to say nice and gently. You obviously don't want to rip anything, not after you've spent this much time doing such fabulous stitching. So you're turning it all through here. And you start to see it coming together. So you want to finish tucking that in. And if your stitches, see like mine, if they're starting to show a little bit there, and that's fine, you just want to pull the thread to tighten it up a little bit. Let's if I can find which bit it is now. Nah, we'll sort it out in a minute, it's fine. So keep going and you want to pull everything through. And this might take a bit of time just to make sure it all sits nice and flat. So these beautiful box corners that you've done. And be able to see here that this is where, when we match those two seams up, I've got loose thread sticking through there actually. I'll cut that off in a bit. But you'll be able to see here, I move that loose thread through. This is where, when you match those seams up as you were making those flags, so that really helps. And again, you might just need to stick your thumb through that hole there just to push these corners out. So, now obviously you've got a nearly finished bag, but you've got a hole in it. So what you want to do is you're going to iron this, this bottom seam. You want to make sure that you're ironing it with that seam allowance inside. Just going to Pull, there we go, pull that thread to tighten those stitches there. I'm just going to tuck it all in so it's nice and flat there. And then you're going to give that a really good press. 
Okay, so press it closed to make sure that seam allowance is on the inside. Now you're just going to stitch it shut. So it'll be really hard to stitch from that corner. So we're just going to stitch kind of maybe an inch in because otherwise you don't want to catch the fabric and kind of undo the beautiful box corners that you've just done. And I'm just going to, you need to make sure your thread matches the colour of your line and you want to do it right on the edge here. So I'm going to do, as we have done throughout, I'm going to start by going forwards and back and holding my thread before I start. Now you're just going to sew all the way to close up that gap. And you'll see that I'm going slow so I can check it as I go. And you'll kind of be able to feel when it kind of gets too close to that. So I'm just going to go a little bit. And now I'm going to secure my thread. I'm going to take your needle out, cut your thread, and then you obviously want to use a pair of scissors. So this is the last bit now, and then your pouch is very nearly finished. So you're going to cut it as close as you can, and because we went forwards and back, that's going to have secured the stitches, so it's not going to unravel. So I'm just going to snip it there and I know there was that loose thread over here wasn't there that was that was going to bug me maybe it was this side yeah there we go let's give that a snip and now what you're going to do is push the line in back inside so I'm just going to push it all through those beautiful boxed corners that you did and having this violin interfacing kind of it keeps the fabric soft while still giving the pouch that little bit of structure just so it can stand up. And this bit here, you just really want to use your thumb here to push it out. Actually, there's me saying use my thumb and I'm using this finger and I'm pushing it through as much as I can. And you see here, this is where your three stitches work. And if you've got any loose threads, which like I obviously do there, that's where you want to cut them off because if they get caught on the zip, it's obviously not a good. There we go. That'll probably teach me not to cut my threads as I go, won't it? And then do the same with the other corner. So use your finger, your thumb if you'd rather, whatever feels better for you, and just really push that corner out. And then you can give it a final press, or if you're like me, just start using it straight away. Because I'll be honest. I'm, can see I'm not that patient and there you go that is your boxed it's a cinch pouch with top stitch zip you see those three lines of stitching that we did on the zipper tabs now, hopefully you can't see them because it should all just blend in and then your corners have pushed out really nicely and that so enjoy it let me know what you think let me know what you make tag me in it and I'd love to see your creations. I'll see you soon for another video. Bye!